Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Good afternoon. What we're going to do is we're going to start a new study here. Lord willing, we're going to try every week to bring to you the biblical truth of our hymns. We're going to study the adventure into truth. Whether it makes me your friend or your enemy, we're going to look at the hymns and their writers. Are they scriptural? And should they be sung by born-again Christians or dumped away? This is the question. We are not going to do every single hymn, but we will do enough and hope when a new hymn comes to your ears, you'll be able to recognize it as Bible or anti-Bible. Matthew 12, 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So if a man, and if he is to be judged on the words chosen and spoken, then I may safely assume what we sing as words would be also judged. When we get up to sing a hymn chosen by the pastor or song leader, such as I love to tell the story, and you do and you don't, or sweet out of prayer and you have not prayed one minute, then we are found liars in the church assembly. Imagine an unsaved visitor singing about there is power, wonder, working power in the blood. Sometimes I'm going to refrain myself from trying to sing and from reading. And dies without Christ. In the realm of music, we must know by Ezekiel 28, we are in the office of Lucifer, the choir director from heaven. Too many churches have fallen by the music group, choir, piano player, and anything to do with the office of music. The music today that comes from the church's origin is of Satan, the fallen Lucifer. Matthew 26:30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out unto Mount Olive. Mark 14, 26. And when they had sung a hymn, as they went out to the Mount Olive, as Jesus heads out to the garden to pray, the final night, with his disciples before Calvary, they sing a hymn. Never said what it, what it was. There is no mention of a musical instrument such as found often in Chronicles. If found in Chronicles, you would think it would be mentioned on the special night from the Lord's Supper to the garden, but it's not. I mean, found in, in Chronicles, it records the instruments that David made. It's recorded who plays them. It's, in, it's recorded who was to sing. There's special divisions that David set. And yet, when the disciples go out with Jesus to the garden, they sing a hymn. Now, am I saying no musical? I mean, no music uh, instruments? Well, let's get with his study, and then when we're done, Lord willing. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Notice it says speaking, speaking to yourself. There are psalms, 150 chapters in your Bible. The Bible holds a hymnal, and how often does the church sing us a psalm? Now, we're going to see some of these hymns there taken from the Psalms, but they don't quote from the Psalms. Hymns and spiritual songs. Hymns and spiritual songs are not to get the flesh and body bumping, snapping, dancing, or even movements. You know, tapping the foot. You're tapping your foot during a, a song service in church. Something's wrong, because that's the flesh, and the flesh is enmity with the spirit. Hymns and spiritual songs are not to get the body going. It is to please God. 
Many a hymn or spiritual song has been lost in the car singing that was never written down. It was between me and my heart and God. We're taking on a new challenge here when we get into the realm of music. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I'm guilty with that one. A lot of times in the, in the song service, open your hymnal 437. Look at that. Oh, man. Why did he pick that one? That's not a cheerful giving of singing. The Word of Christ, the Bible. Teaching and admonishing, reproving, cautioning, or rebuking. When did you sing a hymn on that aspect? To others in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, it is to help others. And there is no helping others if the words you sing are making you L-I-E, lie. we got to realize that lie is a lie no matter what color we color it. And that's it. Three verses on hymns in the Bible. Three verses. Now, I may be a party pooper. I have noticed that hymns, many pronouns, I, me, and notice how often there is no name Jesus. You read Acts 4.12? We're not going to do the modern hymns. We're not, some will come across, but we're not going to get into this modern movement. You know, it's the same word five times, sung eight different times, and yet, them very things are found in our hymnals. Those very things are found in hymns that are traditionally sung. But with the pronouns that can be used to write a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Over the years I have lost the love of hymns because of the modern church movement. I have sat in many churches singing a hymn, opened up a hymn and I looked at it and say, what on earth are we singing? Does he know that that line is anti-scriptural? Now, we got some great hymn writers. We got some great hymns. And we're going to look at some of these hymns. You're going to say, oh, what's he going to pick on with that one? It may not be being picked on. It may be a good hymn that we're going to do good, we're going to do bad. But even some of the great hymns, we got to look at it rightfully. So let's break down to the first one we have. Holy, Holy, Holy. By original Heber, and I mispronounced names, I, I deeply apologize. And music by John Bacchus Dukes. Now, original Heber, born in Malpas, April 21st, 1783. Educated at Bronze Snows College, again, I apologize for these names. Oxford, Victor of Holden, 1807, Bishop of Calcutta, 1823, died in Trichupali, India. April 3rd, 1826. Church of Church Crutch. I got two churches here. Church of England. Diocese Anglin Diocese of Calcutta. So this man is of the Church of England. You gotta go look in the history of the Church of England. Its lyrics speak sufficiently of the Holy Trinity. Having been written for use on Trinity Sunday, which no Bible believer is to celebrate, it quotes the Sanctus of the Latin Mass. Did I hear Mass? Did you know Holy, Holy, Holy for a Mass? Which translate into English begins, Holy, 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 Lord God of Hosts. The text also paraphrases Revelation 4, 1 through 11. In other words, it don't completely quote the verse. John Bacchus Dykes composed the tune Narcia for this hymn in 1861. The tune name is tribute to the First Council of Nicaea, which has formalized the doctrine of the Trinity in 325. Okay, so we got a Anglican of the Church of England. We got a song written for a mass. The tune is from the First Council of Nicaea. Uh, 
The hymn is sung in the 1953 film Titanic. The hymn is sung in the 1956 movie The Fastest Gun Alive. Amy Grant recorded a version of her 2002 studio album Legacy, Hymns in Faith. The Hill Song United Band recorded a version of this hymn consisting of the first and last verses. In 2009, the song was covered by country music singer Ronnie Millsap on his gospel arm album, Then Sings My Soul. So let's look at Revelation 4, 1 through 11. This is the entire chapter. I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, the rapture. I will show thee things which will be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper, and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round, a round rainbow about the throne. In sight like unto emerald. And round about the throne was four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now the throne perceived lightnings and thunders and the voice. This, and there was seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, Round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. I can't wait to hear that. That's the second most important thing, maybe third most important thing that I want to see outside of first being Jesus Christ. I can't imagine the holiness of those voices, those beasts in unison praising God. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Worship God. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things. And for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Now that's the text that this hymn has come from. So, let's take the first. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. That's the first line, verse, whatever you want to call it. And it matches the King James 611 Bible. If it has not been altered in other hymnals, which probably has been. Early in the morning, proper. We're going to rise up and sing to God. Do all Christians rise in the morning to sing unto God? All right, here we are in the church congregation, this hymnal. Let's everyone open your hymns to the hymn number one and let's sing. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song will rise. And did that person rise up that morning and sing unto God? Not many do. But I'm standing guilt of morning song early. Sometimes my morning song is to hit that snooze button. We're supposed to sing to God in the morning. But the hymn puts it as we are doing it in practice. Now, if you sing God in the morning when you get up, praise God. Glory to God. I'm guilty. All the saints. Hmm. Number two. Holy, holy, holy. All the saints adore thee. All the saints. Worldly saints. All of them? When this hymn is sung in a church service, not all the saints are adoring God. Some are by force and other means are being there and wishing someone else, somewhere else. The attitude that person may be in church and is saying, holy, 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 
suggested by the pastor or the, or the choir director of the song there, and he may not be adoring God. Now, maybe you are. But see, one of the things we're going to get in the danger of, when we have the whole congregation saying a hymn, We got congregation members that love the Lord and, and glorify God. We've got worldly minded Christians who, who don't want to have anything to do with God. They're showing up for some other reason, some other purpose in church. They'd rather be somewhere else. We've got unsaved people in the church. And the Bible says in Matthew, we will give an account of everything that we say. So the pastor or the song leader of that church is causing people to sit or stand at a pew and lie before God. It would be proper to say, okay, open your hymn books for this one and every hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Now, we'll give you a moment. Read through it. And if you cannot say that with an honest heart, you, you just, just look along and don't open your mouth. Anybody who's, who's unsaved in this church has never trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Please, don't sing it. Just read it. Look at what the, what the, what the hymn is trying to tell you about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Some are by force again. Golden crowns. So, casting their golden crowns around the glassy sea. All the saints adore thee, casting their golden crown around the glassy sea. So, well, the gro golden crowns, we don't tell what they're made of, do not come to after the judgment seat of Christ. When our works are judged. Now, Revelation 4 said the 4 and 24 elders, but he didn't say they were saints. And we are in the church service singing this song, so saints would be those that are born again, Bible-believing Christians, and I don't have a crown right now. I may not get a crown. Not all Christians will, will get crowns. So you got a worldly Christian who will not get a reward from Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. And now you got him. He's going to cast his golden crown before the throne. What if he doesn't have any? Now you got him thinking, well, I sung. I'm going to cast my crown before God, so I'm going to have a crown. He's not going to think how he gets that crown. He's not going to care where he gets that crown. The song says, I have a crown, but the Bible says... You may not have a crown. Those crowns are to be earned. But the hymn said, I have a crown. See the danger? Now we have crossed the Bible. Making men think, oh, if I'm saved, I have a crown. And if all the saints in heaven, they have not their crowns. Not all saints will get crowns. If the saints are on earth, they have not received their crowns either. Like I said, right now, if I sing this song, I don't have a crown. And not all sinners get crowns. So, move on. The glassy sea. Glasses have got to be in heaven. And the crowns are not present yet. I don't see no glassy sea. So, this is talking about when I get to heaven. When people sing this song, they get to heaven. Not everybody goes to heaven. It says saints. Okay, those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, you got churches running around there saying saints, and they're not saints. Saints have to be given a definition according to the Bible. A man that does what God has told him to do. Some believe that after death, the saint is judged at the judgment seat of Christ. In either case, not all saints get crowns, even if we are at that glassy sea. And Revelation 4.10 gives no indication of gold or any material of those crowns. The 24 elders casting down crowns. We have no idea who they are. Again, the elders falling down. Revelation 4.10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. 
casting their crowns before the throne, saying. So either the scripture, the word of God is correct, or to him. There's good intentions, but wrong doctrine. Why couldn't they take Revelation 4, the entire chapter, and put music to it? Now, I see no problem with line 3. Except for, but well, this is not our problem, Hillsong United Band does not do line 3. It has been edited out by Hillsong. So let's see what Hillsong did not like. Holy, 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 through the darkness hide thee. Though the eyes of sinfulness thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy. Why would you remove that? There must be someone that's holier. There is none beside thee. Why would you delete that? Perfect in power. In love and purity. Why would you delete that? I get rid of verse 2. Keep 3. Now God gets the glory. Amen. This song is about the Trinity, correct? Look at the last word, Trinity. Blessed the Trinity. And yet, in this hymn, where's the name Jesus? I'll give you a minute to look. Jesus is not mentioned. Now granted, he's not mentioned in Revelation 4. He comes up in Revelation 5 and 6 and 7. Revelation 1, Revelation 2, Revelation 3. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. So I would have gave him at least one line. Now, Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea. The holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, a tune which bears striking similarity to John Hopkins' Trinity, set in 1850 to the same words. That's where the, this, the, the tune of this music goes. Now, I would not rule this hymn out. But there are lies for the worldly Christian. And there are in my opinion, some misrep misrepresentation of Scripture. There's nowhere in the Bible that says for the Christian. Actually, I know it's preached. I know it's taught, but it's... Can you find me a Bible verse, book, chapter, and verse that says Christians are going to cast their crowns down? Christians. Saints. Not 4 and 24 elders. There's more saved people than 4 and 24. And I'm not an elder. So until I can find in the Bible that says, I'm going to cast my crown before the Lord, I know, I, even I use it as an illustration. But there's no scriptural backing. And again, all the saints adore thee, Maybe in glory, yes. I'll take that advantage right there. But we're not singing this hymn in glory. We're singing it on earth. All the saints will be casting crowns. If we cast crowns, not all the saints are going to get crowns. Second John says that we lose not our reward, that we get a full reward. For uh, Corinthians, I forget which first or second Corinthians. But it says, our works are going to be tried by fire. Wood, hay, and stubble produces no crowns or rewards, but ashes. I think if you are a Bible believing with your heart, sincerely seeking God, you love God. I think this would be a great song for you to sing of yourself. Singing to yourself, for yourself, of your heart. But you know what the best words and songs and hymn that you can sing to God I found out and I, I you may use the same tune there, there are hymns that got tunes that they're very very easy you just go down the road or you just by yourself and you sing to the Lord with your own words 
Words that have never been printed. Ne words that have never been seen or never will ever touch. Paper. When it comes from your heart, that's approved and acceptable unto God. I mean, we really say, you know, we ought not to read prayers. Are we reading a hymn? You know? And we don't even know what that hymn was. We don't even know that hymn was recorded on paper when Jesus was his disciples sang. I mean, they could have been singing, that was the best lamb we've ever had on to Calvary. And the disciples didn't even know what Calvary was. How many times did Jesus say, I'm going to go and they're going to mock me, they're going to crucify me? And, what? <laughs> now, can you imagine the disciples and Jesus singing a hymn to the garden and leaving out the name Jesus? I would think if you, if you got a hymn for God and Jesus, I would think that at least it would have Jesus somewhere. Now, like I said, I'm not going to rule this hymn out. But I would put a disclaimer in, in before a church that if you're not saved for some of these hymns, not, not, this, not just this one, some of the hymns, just read it and listen. So you worldly Christians, you need to read. And get into your heart what Jesus Christ would. Really. Now, if you really love the Lord and you can do right, okay, then you say. Well, Satan is the author of lies. Some of these hymns make us lie. Some of these hymns are lies. Not this one. But they make us liars. Imagine having an altar call. All right, we've sung our four hymns in the church. Well, now let's have an altar call for all those that sung the hymns and you may have lied about singing the hymn. Let's come up before the altar and confess our sins before the church service. That's what I got to say. That's what I got to say. Be mindful what your words. Jesus said, every idle word shall be spoken. 